Welcome to the Investing Podcast, presented by Tusk Media. Now, for your early morning look at financial news and activity in audio and video form, here's the Morning Market Mimosa. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Investing Podcast. It's Monday, July 25th, 2016. This is your Morning Market Mimosa, and this is take two for us. I just crushed it and didn't have the microphone on. So we're back for another try. If it's not great, uh, you can just ask Joseph, the intern, about how great our last one was. You could ask him in the five-star review section on iTunes. Little known fact, there's a disproportionate impact in rankings in iTunes based on five-star reviews, and that's a real thing. So our download numbers keep increasing, but because we're not getting quite as many five-star reviews, our ranking is actually falling. So leave a five-star review. I think something that would be fun is summer's winding down. We've got Joseph here for a couple more weeks, Austin here for a couple more weeks, Scotty's here forever. Um, but we want to get a little roast going on. So leave a five-star review and roast our interns. So say some funny things about them. We want to get that feedback. And uh, I think we're going to make the person that gets roasted the hardest get a Harambe tattoo because we want to really have them always remember the investing theme of the summer, which was the Herexit when Harambe left this fine planet. Uh, let's, let's talk a little bit about the market and the topics at hand. Futures are up. We've had a nice little run for the market. Dow is up 23 basis points on a futures basis. S&P up three. NASDAQ futures down two basis points. Not a huge deal. We're not stressing about it yet, but if we're still down, you know, one fiftieth of a percent at lunchtime, we might put that panic button on. Uh, gold is down half a percent. Oil down 88 basis points to around 43.80. The big story for this week thematically is going to continue to be earnings, and we'll touch on some of that in a minute. Uh, but a couple deals that are really dominating the headlines so far today. Verizon is finally, finally, finally buying Yahoo. This has been talked about as long as we've been alive, I think. Uh, this has been going on for forever. But they are buying Yahoo, basically acquiring a bunch more digital media, trying to build up that empire. They're buying Yahoo for $4.8 bucks, which is a lot of money, but not nearly what Yahoo was once, once valued at by the market which was a market cap in excess of $125 billion. So if you look at it on that level, Verizon got a really good deal. Uh, obviously a very different company than it was in the dot-com boom of 15 years ago. Another deal, E-Trade, uh, another dot-com stock that people seem to remember and like. E-Trade has acquired Aparture New Holdings. They run Options House, which is an options trading platform. Uh, so that's going to be good. I'm really interested to see which baby pulled the trigger on that. We haven't seen any commercials about that. So I, I don't know anything about the E-Trade babies that focus on mergers and acquisition. Hopefully they're going to kind of tell us a little bit about that. But E-Trade with a big acquisition paid cash for that company. Earnings, uh, again, lots of stories here with earnings this week. Apple reports tomorrow. A lot of people are already talking about that. But one we wanted to draw your attention to is Sprint. Sprint is up 3.3% in pre-market trading, which is really solid, but with the Olympics coming up, and even though they've had strong earnings, we want to remind everybody that it's a marathon, not a sprint. Uh, let's wrap up by talking about the Democratic Convention. We're going to talk about that. I think a lot of people thought we were dogging out the Republicans last week, and we were, but we're going to dog out the Democrats this week. It's only fair. You know, the big story yet again with these uh, Democrats has to do with email. Uh, I just love how consistently email dominates headlines when we're talking about politics, but somebody hacked in to the DNC database and found all these emails. I mainly used it to search for fantasy football trades, see who's making bad decisions on that regard, but comes come to find out, and this is crazy, the Democrats wanted a Democrat to be their presidential nominee. They were not feeling the burn. They were not that excited about Bernie Sanders, a guy who's consistently run and been elected as an independent being elected as a Democrat. Go figure, that's shocking. I don't know why we're actually pretending to be outraged by that. I'm not outraged, I think that's pretty commonplace. Uh, there's probably some Republicans maybe that wanted a Republican to be the presidential nominee as well. Go figure, maybe they should have had an email chain figured this thing out. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we're gonna talk about that throughout the week. Keep an eye on earnings, all that good stuff. We'll be back in a couple hours with the stock market power lunch. At the end of the day, we'll hit you up with the investing happy hour. Y'all have a great day and a great week. Talk to you soon.
Tusk Media is a subsidiary of Narwhal Capital Management. Ratings and reviews of Tusk Media content are not to be construed as endorsements of opinions, analysis, or services offered by Tusk or its parent company. The opinions and predictions shared here are our professional beliefs at the time of publication. We are not under duress from any of the corporate entities mentioned. This is not a solicitation to take any particular action. Although we are investment advisors, this information should not be considered investment, legal, or tax advice. We strive to be as impartial, insightful, and accurate as possible. We base our opinions, analysis, and calculations on information we believe to be reliable, but we cannot guarantee its accuracy. We can, however, guarantee that our opinions will sometimes be flat out wrong due to a variety of factors. Employees and clients of Narwhal Capital Management may or may not hold positions in the securities detailed and may or may not hold these positions in the future. A full list of all securities purchased, sold, or held during the 12 months preceding the date of this publication can be provided upon request. Unless otherwise noted, all data accessed via MarketWatch or the Bloomberg Terminal. Past performance does not guarantee future results. A copy of Narwhal's form ADV is available at the SEC's website, www.advisorinfo.sec.gov, or from Narwhal upon written request.